Hey, what's going on guys? I'm gonna compare the T2s to the 7 Hz Soundless. And I think this is an appropriate comparison because this is one of the best IMs you could buy, like under 500 in my opinion. Uh, it's one of the top performers in basically all the categories. And initially I thought this earphone would have been hype or something, but actually it's not. Like it's really that good. And then over here, we got the new Manger T2s. So this has six balanced armatures and one dynamic driver. And this just has one planar magnetic driver. So yeah, this is a case that it comes with. Honestly, these are huge, so you can't really use it. Uh, this weighs like, it feels like it weighs two pounds, but it doesn't, but it's just heavy. And then this one, it's very nice and soft to the touch, but slightly too big. So yeah. Those are the cases. On to the cable. Both of these IMs have really light cables and they're overall pretty good. So no complaints there. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the fit and the, how comfortable they are. So both of these IMs are pretty comfortable. Um, this one has a slightly larger housing, so it can get a little annoying, but it's not like uncomfortable. So yeah. No pro no issues with comfort for either of these IMs. I just wish the disc on this was smoothened out or not sharp. But other than that, not many complaints. <clears throat> so yeah, cables are good. Uh, fit is great on both of them. So yeah, not many issues I could name there. Uh, so well thought out IMs. And yeah, so... Let's talk about the sound now. Uh, so I had a fair amount of time to listen to both of these, so I know exactly how they sound. Um, yeah, so let's start off with the bass. So the Zanzmanger T2s has like an insane uh, sub-bass response, but it does get a little too much. So when you're listening to music that should not have too much bass, for some reason these portray it more than I would like. And that ruins like the overall focus. Like let's say I'm listening to like a mid-centric song uh, that has a little bit of bass, but this just amplifies it. So the bass is really, really boosted and it does work well for like rap, pop, that has like that energy. But then when you switch over to like classical music or uh, something that's large scale in terms of soundstage, uh, the bass does ruin the ability for you to like focus on a specific instrument or the vocal because the bass is a little too much. So yeah, I wish the bass was toned down. And yeah, it's 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 a really sub bass focus on the T2s. Um, so if you do like extra bass, like extremely boosted bass. I think this would be a good option. Like this sounds like a bass head IEM to me because I mean the bass is just, this is one of the bassiest earphones I've heard. Um, yeah, so I'm not the biggest fan of that. I wish it was a little dialed back. And yeah, that's the bass. So yeah, sub bass focus. And then the seven hertz timeless, the bass is more a part of the mix. You don't ever feel like it's taking over or it's overemphasizing it. It feels like it's more a part of your music. Uh, so yeah, when you're listening to like those large scale tracks like that have instruments playing everywhere, like live recordings especially, this does a much better job with the bass because it comes out when it needs to and it's not ever boosted like 10 annoying amount. So yeah, the bass on this, it's not, I would say it's not really boosted, slightly boosted, but not annoying. And I prefer like a neutral sound. So the quality of the bass, I would say is pretty equal on both. Um, I actually like the definition on the timeless more because it doesn't overemphasize it. So you get the full picture of the, whatever song you're playing. Uh, so yeah, the bass, I would give it to the Timeless because it just feels more natural and a part of the mix where this one is just boosted. 
So yeah, that's the base. Um, yeah, so I would say the Manger T2s has like a thick sound, like really well-bodied vocals, and then the bass is just big, like deep sub-bass sound. So yeah, that's the bass. Uh, let's talk about the mid-range now. So the mid-range on this is really vocal-oriented. It has like some of the most full-bodied mids I've heard. Uh, so it sounds good for vocal music. But I feel like if the mids were slightly pulled back, actually, it would make the sound more open and airy. But yeah, this the mids do sound a little closed in on this because of the forward vocal. So you don't get the best uh, sound stage because of that. So yeah, that's the mids. Uh, any vocal music, it shines. Like the body of the vocal is really well textured. Um, yeah, I just wish there was a little bit more upper mids in this earphone because it is slightly smooth. So I'm not sure if that's the quality of the driver or what, but I think they could have used maybe a better quality driver for the mids just so that upper mid range is more present. But yeah, other than that, it's a good mid range. Onto the timeless. So the... Mid-range on the Timeless is mind-blowing because vocals sound really um, engaging but clear, like crystal clear. Where on these, it could sound a little hyped up. Um, like it has a slight BA timbre to it. Where on the Timeless, you don't hear any issues with that. So, yeah. Basically, uh, the mid-range, let's say you're listening to large scale track basically the t2s aren't gonna stack up to that it's gonna just sound like every other song so you don't know like which track is mastered properly or not with this one because it just has its own way of presenting it so the sound is kind of colored where on the seven hertz soundless the mid-range is gonna shine like nothing's holding it back and it's going to play it pretty accurately to the source. And it's going to sound amazing. So that's insane how an IM that's like $100 cheaper is doing everything. Um, yeah. So that's the mid-range. The timeless skills are very well to like orchestral tracks. Um, even like a guitar pluck, you hear like the amplification on it. Where on the mangard, it's like a little muted. So yeah, this definitely has better micro detail. Uh, you could pick apart anything in the mix um, better than the T2s. So yeah, it's that, it's definitely more resolving in that regard. So yeah, that's uh, timeless. And yeah, so let's talk about soundstage and imaging and detail retrieval. So the soundstage and imaging on the Manger T2s is slightly closed in, so you don't get a good right-left feel. Uh, it sounds more tall, and because of the way this is tuned with the bass really boosted, you do miss a lot of like the small nuances in the song. Where on the Timeless, that's never going to happen, because everything is pretty balanced. So yeah, that's one flaw of the T2s. It doesn't um, resolve as good. Like those small, small details. Uh, Timeless does a much better job. Uh, yeah, so I think I covered basically everything. Uh, the Timeless, again, the soundstage and imaging is huge. Like for the price, I've never heard anything like that. It just sounds like a line of sound coming right in front of you. Where this one is definitely more in your head. So, yeah, imaging, I would say the timeless is slightly better. And the sound stage, again, is slightly better on the timeless. Um, you just pick apart more minute details. Like, if you listen to these side by side, as soon as you put the timeless on, you're going to notice it has way more clarity. Uh, like, a guitar, a piano. It's just everything sounds more a part of the mix and not over-exaggerated. Where on this, the bass could be a little 
annoying and get in the way of those details. So, yeah, if I had to pick one IEM, like, if I can only get one out of these two, I would 100% go with the Timeless. It's just a better all-rounder. The base is more a part of the mix, where this, it just feels completely boosted. And that ruins the perception of the sound because you're always focused on the bass. Where this, it won't ever happen. So yeah, this just does a better job of resolving clarity, micro details. And yeah, so where the T2s excels in, I would say, is the mid-range is very full. Uh, so for vocals, it's really, really good. Um, in terms of naturalness, honestly, after listening to them side by side, I would say it's like a draw. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is worth it because you're paying 120 bucks more for what? Like, so yeah, the timeless just wipes it actually. Um, the bass is more a part of the mix. The treble is clear, but not overemphasized. Um, where on this one, there's a slight bit of BA timbre in the treble notes. Um, and yeah, this one sounds a little more artificial in the treble. Where this one just sounds more raw and engaging. So yeah, I would definitely go for the 700 timeless. And in my opinion, I don't think you should spend a lot on IEMs until you've heard the 7 Hz soundline. Because for the price, it does an excellent job. And yeah, nothing I've heard comes close to it. That even costs double it. So yeah, that was interesting. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend these actually. It's slightly too expensive. The bass is too much. Not enough definition. And it just sounds like sub bass boost. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful. And yeah, take care guys.